So here what we see is that this function is concave down and then concave up after the asymptote. OK, well, armed with all this information, we are now able to sketch a graph of the function. So let's sketch a graph. I'll do it right here, in fact. So what do we have? We see there's a vertical asymptote at x equals 3. So I'll put that in in red. 1, 2, 3. That's a vertical asymptote. x equals 3. There's a horizontal asymptote at y equals 1 y equals 1. So in fact, what this does is this sort of cuts the world up into four pieces. Do you see it? One piece here, one piece here, one piece here, one piece here. And the function will live somewhere in there. The function cannot cross this line, though. This is a vertical asymptote. The function might cross here, but it can't cross here. It can never cross a vertical asymptote. That's why we have to put it down on, on these number charts, because funny things can happen. It's a jump. OK, well, let's see what we have here. We have no points to plug in, notice. We have no critical points. We have no points in flexion. There's no points to plug in. So when that happens, it might be fun just to put in what happens when x equals 0. If you go back to the function and look at f of 0, we see minus 2 over minus 3, which I see is 2 thirds. And so 2 thirds, remember this is at 1, so 2 thirds is actually right here. So you might want to put in that point just to get you sort of solidly going on here. All right, now we've got to try to put all these pieces together. And I think this is really the only fun part of all this stuff, because what you get to do is be a detective and figure out how can all these things happen at the same time. Let's take a look. In this region, on the left-hand side of this vertical asymptote, the function is falling. That means we're going down. We're going down somehow. We also know it's going to be asymptotic to this line. So it can't be coming up, because it's got to be hugging that line. But it can't be hugging the line like this, because that would then be going down. I mean, that would then be going up. This has to be going down. Then I see this thing has to, be actually, has to be concave down. So we have to have it concave down, so cupping down somehow, asymptotic to this, and going down. Well, there's only one way to do that. We must be asymptotic from below. Come down and head like that. See that? See how we're asymptotic? We're going down, so we're going down. Don't let that arrow make you think we're going up. Remember, we always measure things this way. So this is, con this is going down. It's negative. It's concave down, asymptotic, asymptotic. That's the picture. What about in this region? Well, I don't know where the function goes. Maybe it goes in here. Maybe it goes in here. But I see the function's decreasing. The function's decreasing. It can't go in here, because that function would be going up. So therefore, it must be in this region, and it's concave up. And I'm, tang and I'm asymptotic to here and here, concave up, so it must look like that. And that purple is the graph of this function. So it's sort of fun. At the end, you've got to take all these pieces, and you might want to check to make sure that everything has been checked off. And if you come to a crossroads where, in fact, something is inconsistent, it's supposed to be going up but coming down or doing something weird, that means that maybe there's a mistake. You should go back, regroup, check the whole thing. But if everything is consistent and it comes out pretty like this, you're pretty sure you've got a very accurate picture there. We'll try a couple more together in a bit. See you there.